Ray Dalio, billionaire investor, founder of one of the largest hedge funds in the world, Bridgewater, managing over $100 billion. He's saying that now is the time for investors to consider holding more cash. This is a bit surprising because previously he said cash is trash and then sort of modified his comment saying, well, it's less trashy or it's other things are trashier than cash. So it is a bit of a U-turn, but he literally wrote some of the investment books talking about how cash performs over long term versus different other asset classes and how they perform in different environments. So he he's the author. I mean, I have one behind me, The Changing World Order. He knows that inflation eats cash long term, you know, the purchasing power of a dollar. 100 years ago would buy you 30 Hershey's bars. Man, I love chocolate. Now I'd be all over that. But now that same dollar only buys you one bar. You're like, oh, well, that's OK. You've seen a 90 percent plus decline in the purchasing power of holding cash long term. The U.S. isn't alone. Other countries are worse, you know, because of inflation. Yet here it is. He's saying temporarily right now, cash, I think, is good and the interest rates are fine. I don't think it'll be sustained that way. This was Ray Dalio at a Milken conference in Singapore earlier this week. Personally, I keep my cash at interactive brokers where I'm getting over 4.8%. See the link below. And so what's he looking at? He's looking at the yield curve where you're getting 5% plus on two year paper and shorter duration. And you're only getting 4% at longer dated maturities, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. So what I think he's saying is that in the future, the Federal Reserve is going to have to cut rates and you're not going to be getting that 5%. And also, by the way, there's a good chance that that 4% yield on 10 year, maybe 30 year paper, maybe that even goes up. So what is the problem here? The problem here is that long dated U.S. Treasuries have lost a lot of money. So that means the investors in this so-called safe asset have lost roughly 40 percent. This is TLT, a long dated ETF for 20 year plus treasuries lost 40 percent over the last three years. This is supposed to be a safe asset. So who's getting out? Well, you have the Federal Reserve. They've been trimming their balance sheet and that this includes significant amounts of treasuries. They've reduced their balance sheet. You know, this is year to date. And you can see each month with the exception of a huge uptick during the financial crisis, the mini financial crisis earlier this year with Silicon Valley Bank, you know, imploding where their balance sheet, you know, stepped up by several hundred billion. You know, subsequently each month pulling liquidity out of the system by about one hundred billion dollars a month. Then you had the banks that were buying this, like Silicon Valley Bank. I did a video on them. You know, I did a video within 24 hours of them shuttering. And I said, you know what? I don't think they're going to be able to you know, get out of this. They were some of the buyers. They've been burned along with many other regional banks. You know, they're wondering, well, should I be buying it? Probably not. I mean, I lost a lot of money on this. Then you have international players. They're not buying. You have you know, China looking at their U.S. Treasury holding now reaching a 14 year low. And by the way, you know, who, who's running the shop here? We're looking at the U.S. government expecting to still spend five to 10 percent of GDP each year. So continued record spending in the years ahead is completely out of touch with where we are. So who's going to be buying government debt? Well, first of all, in full disclosure, this is not financial advice. Also, if you're looking to take charge of your investment journey, consider unrivaled investing dot com for compelling investment ideas, real time portfolio updates and our exclusive discord server available for annual subscribers. By the way, I'm raising the rate later this month. So now is the time to lock in the favorable pricing. So what did Ray Dalio have to say? So here's a picture of Jerome Powell in the background. It's very relevant because Ray Dalio is saying when the interest rates go up, the central bank then has to make a choice. Do they let them go up and have the consequences of that or do they then print and print money and buy those bonds. And that has inflationary consequences. We're seeing that dynamic happen now. I personally believe that the bonds longer term are not a good investment. So what's he talking about? He's saying the consequences of monetary tightening has not been felt yet. And this is the this is the power of super investors. Super investors aren't looking at what's going on today. They're looking out six, 12 months down the line, and they're saying, hey, what do I think the economy is going to do? What do I think asset prices are going to do? And he's looking at the impact of significantly higher interest rates, liquidity getting pulled out by the Federal Reserve. And he's saying that transmission, there's a lag there. It could be 12 months. It can be 18 months. We haven't really felt the full impact, but we will. And when we will, when we do, the Federal Reserve is going to have to choose 
do we sort of suck, you know, suck it in, you know, suck it up, buttercup, and accept the pain with higher unemployment, a tougher economy, or do they then print money and buy those bonds, and then you have inflation rip higher? And so he's saying, and I think he's suggesting, and he, he goes, they always ultimately choose to print money because enduring that pain is just too painful. And so what he's suggesting, is, and that's the reason why he's saying long-term bonds don't make sense, especially because the U.S. government really doesn't have its spending under control. So he's expecting that you will have an uptick in inflation, potentially. You will also have an economic impact from the higher rates. So he, I think he's saying there's a lot more pain ahead. And I have a couple of different perspectives on this. One, I, I don't disagree. You know, when I look at my own portfolio, cash and a market hedge combined are arguably my largest position over 30% of my portfolio. So I'm well prepared and eager for, you know, there to be a dislocation. I would personally love it. That said, I'm also opportunistic. So when something falls, even if Ray Dalio is saying hold more cash or what have you, I buy if I find something compelling. You know, and recently, as I've called out to my subscribers on Unrivaled Investing, some stocks have, have dropped like 50% in a couple of weeks. And I still think the, you know, the it's very compelling long term. So if I can pencil out 200, 300% upside, then I'm buying. And in some cases, I can pencil out even more, you know, regardless of if you think, you know, cash is preferred. Now, it's important to recognize you do get extremes, just like how you had one extreme and the extremes always surprise with how far it goes, you know, like, holy smokes, digital monkey pictures for millions of dollars. Like, it's just a JPEG, folks. Like, yet people were doing it and they're like, oh, we're the exclusive club of digital monkey pictures. And it's like, all right, you know, if you want to just trade some bananas among yourselves, fine. Um, so you do get extreme froth, but you also get extreme you know, greed or extreme fear. And we haven't really seen that yet. And when that happens, especially if the Federal Reserve is like, uh, not sure what we do, not sure if we start printing money, you can be surprised with how low things can get. So I think it's important to remember that mindset because we really haven't seen it for many years in terms of, wow, how low can things go? We haven't had that period of, you know, will the Federal Reserve not step up for us? So that is a different sort of mindset for investors to consider. And I think that's part of the reason why Dalio is saying effectively expect pain ahead because, you know, there will be consequences to what happened. And long term, he doesn't want to own bonds. Yes, right now, cash is temporary, temporarily the place he wants to be just because you're getting a better yield on it than, let's say, longer dated bonds. And there's a good chance those long dated bonds, those yields have to go up because the U.S. government, who's going to be buying U.S. debt? And as I've covered, there's a lot of players that got burned over the last few years. So if the U.S. government says, hey, we're going to spend a lot of money and then no one's showing up to buy the debt, oh, interest rates are moving higher. And if interest rates move higher, well, wait a second, that impacts everything. That imp impacts corporations. Then they go, oh, man, I now have to refinance our debt. And then when they have to refinance their debt at a much higher level because the U.S. government doesn't have its house in order, then, you know, they have to make choices of, oh, we can no longer finance this expansion project. We can no longer hire these roles. And so then you start seeing the impact in the economy. We are just I mean, it's that's the reason why he's talking about the, the dynamic happening now. We haven't felt the full impact of the monetary tightening. But like any great investor, he's looking six, 12 months out saying this is where I think we're heading. I hope this video has been helpful for you. You've been watching Unrivaled Investing. For more on my personal journey, go to unrivaledinvesting.com. Thank you so much for tuning in.